All right, so welcome to our 19th lecture on this beginner's course in algebraic topology. I'm Norman Wahlberger at the University of New South Wales. And today we're going to talk about an algebraic zip proof of the classification theorem of two-dimensional surfaces. So this is an alternative proof to the one that I sketched in the last lecture. And its uh, basic idea is due to John Conway, who is a very prolific and well-known mathematician at Princeton University, also the inventor of the game of life, and uh, well-known for his work in group theory. And he, uh, in the early 90s, I think he discovered another way of thinking about this classification that uh, gives a, a new slant on things, and that I think will be interesting for us to look at. I'm going to present a rather algebraic look at uh, Conway's uh, zip proof. So what is the, the basic idea? Well, uh, Conway li likes to work with spheres, and spheres with additional structures put on them. What kind of additional structures? Well, for example, holes. So we could imagine having a hole. Or we could imagine having a cross cap. We can maybe picture like this. It's supposed to be a cross cap. That's like a projective plane glued to the sphere. That one's a hole. Or maybe a handle we get by taking two little disks and making tubes up from each of them and then gluing those tubes together. There's a handle. Or another version of that is something called a cross handle, where you take the two holes on the sphere, imagine having two tubes coming up, and we're gonna join them up, but now not in the same, not in the way we make a torus, but rather in the way we make a Klein bottle. Okay, so, okay, so this one comes up, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll um, have its flange there, and then maybe it comes in and joins with, with this one. That's supposed to look like a, a Klein bottle. Right. And so that's a different way of, 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 of attaching two tubes coming up from the sphere, either as a handle or a cross handle. Now those pictures can also be replaced by something a little bit more algebraic. So another way of looking at those things is, well, say, a general hole, well, it might have some, some sides. So we think of a general hole as maybe having edges labeled by A, maybe B, C, and so on. A cross cap can then be thought of as a hole with two edges like a projective plane. These are all now holes. So if we glue the, these two holes together, then we're going to get a cross cap, like a projective plane. A handle, on the other hand, could be thought of as a, another hole with two edges, maybe E and E in this direction, and two edges F and F, just like a torus. And a cross handle could be thought of as something very similar, but maybe G, G, where these two sides, H and H, let's say, are in opposite directions. So this is the same kind of picture, but just in terms of uh, holes which have, whose sides have not been glued yet. So Conway's uh, idea is that instead of starting with uh, lots of polygons, for example, let's have an example of a polygon. So this is the basic kind of object that we used in our traditional proof, a polygonal piece like this. And we had a word associated to it, say A, B, C inverse D. That was the word of the polygon. And there was also a little bit of ambiguity. We could rotate 
around. So this is by definition the same as B, C, inverse D, A. It doesn't matter where you start. Okay. So Conway says, let's, let's think about this polygonal piece rather differently. Let's take this polygonal piece, imagine it's made out of cloth, and punch our hole, punch our fist through it, making a, a sack whose boundary is these four edges. And then we can think of that sack as actually being a sphere. So it's really the same, but we're just looking at that polygonal piece in a different way. We're not thinking of it as a sphere with a big hole in it. And the hole will be oriented just the same way that the polygon was, A, B, C, D. This is now a hole on a sphere instead of a polygon. So this is now a sphere with a polygonal hole. And we'll represent that by an also a word, say A, B, C, inverse D. But to denote the fact that we're thinking of it as a sphere with a hole, we'll put some brackets around it. That'll alert us to the, uh, that we're thinking about this a little bit differently from, from that over there. And of course, uh, this is also the same as we can rotate the labeling, B, C, inverse D, A. Now something that we were allowed to do over here is flip the polygon around. We could lift it off the paper and put it down backwards. And that would have the effect of reversing the, the, all the letters, re replacing the order and the inverse. So we could also uh, write this one over here as um, A inverse, D inverse, C, B inverse. Going in the opposite direction with inverses where there were ordinary ones before. And similarly here, that corresponds to taking the sphere and, and flipping it inside out through the hole. Right. We could just, just take the sphere, flip it inside out, the inside becomes the outside and vice versa, so we allow ourselves to write this as, um, say, A inverse, D inverse, C, B inverse. All right, so it's very close, but what's the advantage in, in thinking about it as a sphere with a polygonal hole? The advantage is we can consider more than one hole. So we can consider a sphere, which has a bunch of holes. And so I'll draw one right there. So A, B, C, D. That's a hole. And maybe a triangular hole. E, F in this direction, G. And Let's make another hole with just with one edge. Let's call it uh, H. So now we have three holes, and we're going to represent a sphere with three holes in an extended way, as we did over there. We'll write it just as a product of the individual holes. So this one here is A, B, C, inverse D. That's the, that hole there. And this hole here would be E, F inverse G inverse, and this hole, just H. So we're going to record all the holes on the sphere. Red, each of them red with the same orientation. as a product, in fact, as a commutative product. Of individual 
holes or words. When I say the same orientation, we're on a sphere here, so I'm reading this one here. There's really a, um, an orientation like this on the surface of the sphere. I'm reading this one in that orientation. I, I, we're going to read all of them in the, in the same way to be consistent over the surface of the sphere. Now, well, we could, however, turn the sphere inside out. If we turn the sphere inside out, And perhaps it's simplest to think about doing that via another hole. But to turn the sphere inside out, we could turn it inside out through each of the, any one of the holes, but that makes it maybe a little bit asymmetrical. So let's just think about making another puncture, flipping the sphere inside out through that other puncture, and then closing that other puncture off after you're finished. Then what happens is that each of the individual holes has its um, word replaced by its inverse. So, um, in this case here, we would get, say, D inverse C, B inverse A inverse. It's easiest just if you read it backwards. G, F, E inverse, and H inverse. So that's a sphere with holes. But we want to have more than just one sphere, so we have a convention how to treat more than one sphere. For more than one sphere, what we do is we record the sum of the individual spheres. Okay, so for example, suppose we have two spheres, and A, B, A, C happens to be one hole there, and another hole, let's say, is a single uh, one there with a, an edge A. No, sorry. Or oh, edge D. D. And over here we have a single triangular hole. Let's say D, B, C. All right, so we could regard the, the union of these two things as a combinatorial surface, call it M, and we'll represent it by a sum of the individual combinations of the holes. So this one here would be the whole A, B, A inverse C, together with the whole D. And this one would be B, C, D inverse. There were no edges that were on two different holes. No, yeah, that, the question is, uh, there were, in this example, there were no edges which are on two different holes. That was just a... But not necessary. It, the edges can be common to different holes or to different spheres. They can be distributed as they like. In fact, now we can sort of think of a combinatorial surface as an expression like this, if we want to. So we, we might even make, be able to make a definition that uh, a combinatorial surface is an expression consisting of a sum of products of words, each in letters A, B, C, and so on. And in their inverses, 
with each letter appearing exactly twice. With some equivalences or e notions of equality. Which I have yet to explain. All right, so Conway's proof was very geometric and, in fact, doesn't require an algebraic framework like this. Okay? Conway's uh, proof, uh, roughly, is that we start with a polygonal surface as a bunch of polygons with edges, exactly two appearing, and we think of each polygon as a sphere with a hole in it. Okay? And what we're going to do, then, is we're going to take all these spheres with holes and we're going to zip the edges together. That's why it's called the zip proof. So we take an edge A that may occur in one hole somewhere, and we look for the other occurrence of A, which is somewhere else, might be on the same sphere, might be on the same hole, might be on a different hole, might be on a different sphere altogether. And we're going to take that edge A and that edge A, and we're going to zip them together and look to see what happens as we build up the surface by zipping together all the edges. We're going to do this until there are no more uh, free edges, no more holes, and just um, a, a surface. And basically his argument is that if you start with, a, basically we are starting with spheres with holes, we're starting with a sphere with holes, with cross caps, handles, and cross cap, and cross handles. And, okay, in this, well, as we're starting, there happen to be no cross caps yet, and no handles yet, and no cross caps handles yet. But as we glue or zip these edges together, it's not too hard to see that at each stage having handles, cross caps, and cross handles is preserved. That property is preserved under any uh, of the various possible zippings together. So you have to examine the various possible zippings, what happens when you zip two uh, that are on the same hole, two in different holes, or two on different spheres. All right, I'd like to um, present that a little, bit, a little bit more algebraically because I think it's, a, it's kind of interesting to have a very computational approach to the subject that could conceivably be implemented by a computer. So someone could write a program to manipulate these expressions and create surfaces or classify surfaces from rather, such rather random expressions. So we have to explain what these various uh, notions of equality are. Okay, so the, the notions of equality that we're allowed to use to go from one expression to another. Well, we've already mentioned some, some basic ones, the ones that involve rotating a word, and the ones that involve inverting a, a, a given sphere. Okay. But in addition, there are some other ones that we would want. And the first one we'll, we'll call uh, zipping spheres. Okay, so we have two spheres, and On one of them we have a hole with, ha with an A edge, and the rest of it I'll denote by X. So X, the letters in the alphabet like X, Y, Z will typically denote variable edges, combinations of edges, and, and then the, the actual edges themselves will typically be A, Bs, and Cs. All right, so there's, there's one hole, and there might, there might be some other holes on this uh, sphere. Let's, let's, let's put it in a U representing some other holes. And over here we have another sphere which also has an A edge, but the A edge is going in the opposite direction as we're looking at it in this orientation. So A, Y, and then there might be some other uh, stuff. Said. Okay, maybe I'll put a second hole here. So 
maybe u and w. Okay, so how would we represent this whole? Well, there's um, a word for the whole u, there's a word for the whole w, whatever they are, and then this whole is, say, xa. And over here, this one has uh, a inverse y, and also another whole z. Now what we sh should do is we should think about this as, let me just put these things on the side, and let me make, the, the, make them like tubes with the holes almost together. So I'm, uh, there's our sphere, the first one, and it's got a, still has its uh, U hole and its W hole somewhere. But over here is the hole that we're interested in, and it's the hole with uh, an A here and an X here. So that's sort of looking inside the, inside the, the sphere. And now we'll take this one here and we'll move it over here. So, blah, like this. It's got some whole Z on it. And over here, the A is in this direction, and the Y is in this direction. And that's sort of looking inside it. So I've got them lined up. We're going to zip together the two A's. So what happens when we zip together the two A edges? So there's, to zip together these two A edges. Well, we're going to get kind of a blob shape. There's still going to be our Z hole over here, our U hole here, our W hole here. And the old A edge, so sort of the back here. And now this X and this Y piece, let's sort of do it like this, are going to form a new hole. So the old A pieces are back here. And so now we can write this as a single sphere, U, W, X, and Y together, and Z. And if we ignore these extra words, the essential aspect is that if we have one sphere with a whole XA and another sphere with a whole A inverse Y, then we can combine them to get a new, one single sphere with a whole XY. So we've zipped together two edges, and the two spheres have become one sphere. So that's our first allowable, first new operation. And our second one is um, well, we could say zipping uh, same same direction edges in a hole. So, just here. We'll have a hole with a side B and side, not same direction, opposite edges, opposite direction rather. This is zipping opposite direction edges in a hole. So we have B, B, and maybe some sequence of words X, some sequence of uh, edges Y. And there might be some other holes too. Let's represent them by U. 
Okay, so we're looking at a particular hole that has an edge B and another edge B in the opposite direction, and we're going to zip those together. And when we do, we get a single hole X on one side, and a kind of a dotted line where the edge B used to be, and then another hole Y on the other side. There's still our sphere, and the other holes on the sphere have not changed. So we can write this as X, B, Y, B inverse, that particular hole can be replaced by hole X, hole Y. And if there's a hole U in front, then it stays um, there as well. But the crucial relation is that X, Y equals X, B, Y, B inverse. And it's important to recognize that we can go both ways. Not just zipping the hole, but if necessary, we can have two holes and we can combine these two holes into a single hole by creating a new edge B. So it's not just a way of zipping together holes, it's also a way of, uh, not just a way of zipping together edges, it's also a way of coalescing two individual holes to get a bigger hole. To go from here to here. And the third thing that we need is separating cross caps and handles. Okay, so suppose, so these are rather special uh, things. Suppose we have a, a hole that has an A edge and another A edge right beside it and an X. That's a hole. Then if we look at the neighborhood of this vertex here, if we go in this direction here on the surface of the sphere, then we're moving to the bottom of the A edge. And the bottom of the A edge here moves to the top of the A edge there. And the top of the A edge here moves to the bottom of the X edge. So what ends up happening is that this vertex here, let's call it capital A, is associated with this vertex here, also with this vertex here. And the fact that these two edges are, these two vertices are actually the same after we glue means that we can think of the A and the A piece together and then there's the, uh, the, the other hole forming the X hole is adjacent and there's nothing preventing me because I can move holes, I can m move that extra hole away. I'll put it separate. So this is the hole X. So in other words, I've gone from, and there may be some other holes, U, let's say. So from some U, and then from a word A, A, X, where X is some arbitrary sequence of letters, I go to U, A, A, and then X. So I can separate that cross cap from the rest of the letters in the hole that it appears if the A and the A are adjacent like this. And then there's the same argument, same for what happens when you have a handle. If you have a word like U, A, B, A inverse, B inverse, times say some Y, exactly the same argument shows that you can separate that handle from the rest a, B, A inverse, B inverse. 
creating two individual holes. One is now a pure handle, just as we now ha had a pure cross cap or projective plane before. Okay, so now our strategy for the proof. What we want to do is we want to start with a, an arbitrary combinatorial surface. Start with combinatorial surface, which is connected. And that means that when we zip together different spheres or different polygons after zipping we get one sphere so we start off with our the same way we started our proof with our traditional proof with lots of polygons, we reinterpret the polygons as spheres with holes. And then we start zipping together different spheres along common edges to get just one connected uh, surface. Okay. So you can have a, a sphere with uh, some big hole. Lots of different labeled edges. Okay, and then after that, we are going to zip together opposite direction edges. according to our second operation to get still one sphere now with many holes the number of edges is going down but the number of holes is increasing okay now what do we do um, zip together same direction edges in a hole. Okay, so let me explain that uh, important step. And it's reminiscent of what we did in the uh, classification theorem, but it's somehow stated a little bit differently. So suppose we have a hole that looks like this. So there's an edge A and then some sequence Y and then another edge A in the same direction and then some more stuff uh, X. And there might be other holes too. Say V and U. All right, so we have V and U and then we have this hole A, Y, A, X. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this. V, U, A, Y, B plus B inverse A, X. I remind you there was a rule that was like this a, x a plus a inverse y equals x y. Remember that one? That was one of our basic rules. So we're using this and thinking of uh, this thing here as being combination of two things and separating it in two words by introducing a new edge, in this case uh, b. So the a y and the a x are separated with a b and a b inverse. 
Right, okay, so then we have, we're going to rearrange this as V, U, we'll just rotate this around, Y, B, A, and we'll rotate, uh, um, this is a, a new sphere. So we're allowed to invert this sphere. Inverting that sphere means changing the orientation and replacing all of the things with inverses. So that would be like A inverse and then B and then X inverse. And now I perform the same thing that I did over here but in reverse. Now I think of A and A inverse as being the common uh, interior edge and I'm going to contract there giving V, U and then Y, B, B, X inverse. And then I can write this as V, U, B, B, X inverse Y. And now that's a cross cap that's uh, separate, we can separate that from the rest of the word. So we can um, write it as V, U, X inverse Y. So it's, it's still on the same sphere exactly. Uh, the cross cap is just another word on, on the sphere. That's, that's the rule. All right, so where have we got? We've gotten, our, we've gotten cross caps kind of dealt with. Now how, how do we get uh, the handles? Okay, so I think the next step that we're going to do is looking at zip together holes on a sphere. So suppose we have, say, U, X, A, A inverse Y. So we have two separate holes with an A and an A inverse uh, appearing in those two different holes. Then what we can do is we can write this as U times X A B A inverse Y B inverse. That was another way of combining uh, two holes by essentially creating an edge in between them, the new edge uh, B. And now the idea is to manipulate this so that we get a handle out of it. And it's a little bit reminiscent of what we did in the traditional proof, but we'll just do it here in, in the, this context. So we'll get U times, let's write it as B inverse X A B. Okay, A B. A inverse Y first. And then U, B inverse, X, A, B, and I'll separate right here, putting in a C plus a C inverse. And this is then U, rotating around B C B inverse X A plus A inverse Y C inverse. So I've rotated now so that the A and the A inverse are side by side and then I will use them to, to combine U B C B inverse X, Y, C inverse. And that gives us U, maybe C inverse, B, C, B inverse, X, Y. So it's a manipulation that it's extracted a handle that we can now separate from the rest equals U, C inverse B, C, B inverse times X, Y. So basically this gives us enough technology we can 
zip together same direction edges, we can zip together opposite direction edges. And so, uh, continuing, we get the a sphere with cross caps and handles. So I haven't talked about uh, cross handles. Cross handles are really just two cross caps. Uh, and this is sort of in parallel to the, the proof that we did uh, last time. And then we have to argue, as we did before, that cross cap plus handle is the same as three cross caps to get it in the standard form if we want to. But I think it provides an interesting sort of algebraic uh, framework that conceivably somebody could, could write a, a program, and maybe an interesting exercise for uh, aspiring programs, to write a little program that takes an arbitrary expression, which is a combinatorial surface, and goes through and creates uh, a bunch of cross caps and handles at, uh, at the result. All right, so it's a very beautiful theorem, this classification of two-dimensional uh, surfaces, and it has uh, lots of consequences. Next time, I'm going to talk about the connection between these different kinds of surfaces and classical geometries. Right? So it turns out that the Euler characteristic sort of separates all the two-dimensional surfaces into three uh, classes, and corresponding to spherical geometries, Euclidean geometries, and hyperbolic geometries. And the connection with the surfaces and the geometries is, is quite an interesting and important one. So we'll see you then.